Hello everyone, back to tuning day's fur video, doing Gaz Werby Sunny Roundup for today's fur video. So this is your eclectic mix of this and that. We'll be looking at things like sea surface temperature, anomalous solar activity, the SOI, the AO, the NEO, and the weather next week to 10 days and beyond as well. So sit back, relax, enjoy, and I shall get on with it for you uh, very shortly. Just say that the first video release day was our nice little 7 a.m. upload. Just having a look at weather next two or three days. Uh, and uh, we also released the summer update as well. Now, there's a bit of a mishap with the summer update because I accidentally <laughs> uploaded last week's summer update. I don't know how it happened, but um, it's not supposed to happen, actually, because YouTube should have a filter that stops you uh, uploading uh, the same video twice. Um, but that filter obviously didn't work. And so uh, around 10 a.m., you was all watching last week's Sunday round, <laughs> but I've deleted about not uploading the proper ones so have a look about it. have a laugh about it on the live stream tonight at six o'clock i'm so sorry everybody about that uh just one of those things you know the amount of stuff that i'm uploading uh <laughs> you know mistakes do happen sometimes but as that should not get through really youtube filters so i don't know what what went wrong there but never mind the correct summer update has been uh <laughs> released now we'll have a laugh about it on the live stream i will be live streaming at six o'clock uh, so we'll check in, see how we're all doing, and we'll uh, live you some long range as well on uh, that one. So I'll, I'll see you live at six. Uh, right, let's get on with Sunny Roundup then. Uh, so it's been a very eventful morning. Going to start off uh, with uh, solar activity. So so this is looking on our side for this day from Soham.net. We've got one sunspot area uh, just here. Otherwise, we've got a completely blank uh, solar disk. So activity is at very low levels, and it's expected to remain at very very low levels for the next three days. If the gas web is solar activity tracker, sent through by a good friend James Acril, updated to uh, to today, the uh, to the third of um updated to the 3rd of uh, March, uh, May, sorry. Um, so uh, here we go then uh, with solar activity. So, uh, you can see that we have gone through like a period of more active conditions, actually. So, um, our thick green and thick red lines have traded up quite significantly over the past uh, few days. Uh, the orange line is depicting each individual day's worth of sunspot activity. So, you can see that like a week ago, we had our highest level of activity that we have had since uh, back at the end of last year. Uh, so, so quite a spike, act, a spike in activity. However, we've been training downwards with uh, sunspot numbers over the past few days. This is where uh, we currently are. So we're back down on the floor of the chart, more or less, um, now uh, with, uh, with sunspot numbers. So still very up and down at the moment. We are progressing further on in solar cycle 25, around 18 months now into solar cycle 25. But we're still rather up and down with our daily sunspot uh, numbers. However, the activity we had like last week and the days before enough to, uh, you know, uh, lift up uh, the trend lines quite significantly, the thick green and uh, the thick red lines there. Right, who am I today? Let's have a look and see. Uh, who could it be? Oh, it's Gav Presley. What do we think about that then, everybody? Richard has turned me into the dreams. king. What do you think this is be? In my dreams. Oh dear. Yeah, I'm, it's Gab Presley today. I've been turned into the king by Rich. Thank you, Rich, for doing that. I don't know. I don't think I've got his, uh, his looks uh, somehow. Uh, how far have I, Mrs. P? No, you've got to go around the house. No, that's right. <laughs> okay, so let's have a look at our latest sunspot number. So, uh, spotless day. <laughs> uh, the current spotless day uh, stretch is one day. Um, and uh, for 2021 so far, we've had 41 days without sunspots. That is 40. 34% of the year. I'm so sorry, everybody. I'm going to pull myself together. Uh, 2020 uh, had 57% of the year. 208 days without sunspots. And two, uh, uh, 2019 had 281 days. 77% of the year without sunspots. That's our solar minimum year, of course. And you see that percentage is gradually coming down uh, for 2021 as we progress on. 
into uh, into Solar Cycle number 25. Thank you so much, Rich and James, for the data. And, of course, thank you so much, Rich, for, for turning me into the king. I don't know. <laughs> right, let's have a look at sea surface temperature anomalies, shall we? This is how the oceans were looking. Uh, we did last week's Sunday Roundup. So we've got three areas of interest. We've got the Enso region just here. Uh, we've got the Northern Atlantic over there. And uh, no, we've not got North Pacific over here. I've got to put myself together. I've got North Pacific over here. I've got the Northern Atlantic over there. Right, so that's how the oceans were looking when we did last week's uh, Sunday Roundup. Let's have a look at the latest then. So this is it. This is the latest chart as of 29th of April. So what do we think about this? Let's have a look. So uh, we have got, uh, we've seen a further weakening of uh, the landing and signature in the Enso region, actually. So those colder than average sea surface temperature anomalies are continuing to fade and uh, to go away. I'm so sorry, but I'm going to have to stop the video for a second. Right, that's it. I've uh, put myself together, got myself under control, uh, so we shall uh, progress on <laughs> with the uh, with the study round. So, um, yeah, the answer re the answer reading shows that landing is continuing to uh, fade. We still have slightly cold and average sea surface temperature anomalies here in the equatorial Pacific Ocean, but the La Nina signal is gradually uh, unraveling week by week. We are back at Enso neutral now. If we have a look at the uh, northeastern Pacific last week, this is it, uh, up here. So let's go back to this week. Looks like that's warmed up a little bit as well in the uh, northeast Pacific, although still pretty cold here off the uh, west coast of America. And then into the North Atlantic, let's see how things are looking, uh, well, how things were looking there last week. So that's the profile of the North Atlantic last week. This is the latest. Um, not much change uh, really there. So uh, it's still significantly a uh, woman average uh, just here to the south of Greenland. Uh, and like from the uh, Azores to the Canary Islands and then down to the Tropic Atlantic, still pretty warm through there. It's a little bit cooler uh, but not significantly so uh, around here. We'll be monitoring sea surface temperature anomalies in the Atlantic Ocean, of course, closely during uh, May. Southern Oscillation Index uh, next. This is how the SOI, <coughs> excuse me, is currently looking uh, from uh, Queensland government. So let's have a look at this thing. So remember, the SY is just an index that's reflecting the atmospheric state. It's not driving anything in its own term. It just tells what the atmosphere is doing when the SY is in its negative phase. The atmospheric setup uh, measuring pressures between uh, Tahiti and Darwin. Um, the, when the SY is in negative phase, uh, the atmospheric setup would be reflective of El Nino. When the uh, SY is in positive phase, the atmospheric setup would be reflective of uh, La Nina. So uh, we can see that a few days ago we had some slight positivity of the SOI, 26th of April at plus 4, 27th of April at plus 5, 28th of April at plus 10, 29th of April at plus 5. More recent days have gone negative though, more towards El Nino, 30th of April at uh, minus 5, uh, 1st of May at uh, minus 14, and 2nd of May at minus 20. Point two out, that's his, uh, two eight, that is exceptionally negative. If that was to carry on for like two or three months, we'd find ourselves going into an El Nino. But of course, at the moment, what's happening is that we're trading negativity and positivity of the SOI, which will probably keep us locked in uh, and so neutral, uh, if anything. The SOI... Uh, the SOI 30-day um, average is just sort of flatlining away at uh, a weekly positive. So the red line just here, SOI 30-day uh, average is flatlining away there, weekly positive. The 90-day average is uh, is coming down, so that went up to plus 8. It's now at around plus 3, so that is also coming down. That moves much less, of course, because it's a 90-day average rather than a 30-day average. Uh, let's have a look at CFS V2 forecast for uh, ENSO for the rest of the year. So uh, the important numbers, of course, are, uh, are uh, half a degree below average or half a degree above 
average. Half a degree above for El Nino, half a degree below for La Nina. Uh, so you can see that at the moment we're around here. We're at Enzo uh, Neutrals uh, on the cool side of Enzo Neutral. We're around Enzo Neutral. Black dashed line is the uh, ensemble mean. That's keeping us around Enzo Neutral right way through to the end of the year and into the beginning of January 2022. The uh, coloured lines here, the red lines are like the uh, earliest uh, ensemble blue members. The blue lines are like the latest ensemble blue members. So, um, see, but some of the more latest ensemble blue members are dipping back down in towards La Nina territory. But there's only a few of them doing that. Just something to keep an eye on. As we go further on from May into June, the, model will probably, or the models will probably start to firm up on where we're going and then, so through the second half of the year. So, so these later ensemble blue members might be starting to pick up on a, a return of La Nina through the summer. But we'll have to see. The ensemble mean is actually keeping us at so neutral uh, at the moment. Right, QBO. Uh, next, quasi biennial oscillation uh, looking like this. Uh, so remember, the uh, QBO again is just an index, but it's reflecting the absolute state. This time, it's kind of telling us how strong the zone of westerlies uh, are. So uh, when you're in a westerly QBO, uh, the zone of westerlies uh, will be powered up, they'll be stronger. Uh, when you're in an easterly QBO, the zone of westerlies uh, will be uh, weaker. The QBO is, uh, is something that should oscillate over like uh, a 12 to 15 month time frame between westerly and easterly uh, phases. It should be very pulse like, it should be continuous, you know, oscillation between westerly and easterly phases. However, last year we had a failure of the easy QBO. With this, uh, this from NASA, with this you have to think that, like, this is the stratosphere, just here, very top of the atmosphere. Um, and the sandy coloured areas are like the westerly QBOs, the blue green coloured areas are the easterly QBOs. Our last proper easy QBO phase is virtually disappearing off the chart now. Uh, it was back in 2017 18. It'll soon be gone off this chart. We should have gone into an easy QBO last year. Uh, there we see it there uh, at the top of the atmosphere in the stratosphere, but it did not descend. It did not descend from the stratosphere into uh, the troposphere successfully, troposphere being 30 to 50 HPA, uh, of course. And, and so Wesley QBO just clung, clung on uh, and actually strengthened at the end of uh, last year. And uh, so where we currently are is with Westerly QBO. It has been quite a strong Westerly QBO in the troposphere, but the EC QBO never completely went away from the stratosphere. EC QBO continues to lurk up there, lurk up there in the stratosphere. If we zoom in, I think we are seeing increasing size of the uh, EC QBO strengthening and trying to tro propagate down to the troposphere. So uh, there we are. That's the EC QBO just there. And I think there is clearly a dissension going on from the stratosphere towards the troposphere. Not yet into the troposphere. We still have the Wesley QBO, albeit weakening here in the troposphere. But I think we can, you know, week by week, we can clearly see evidence that the EC QBO is both strengthening and attempting to move from the stratosphere into the troposphere. So my suspicion is that we will still see the commencement of the easterly QBO uh, as we go into this summer. But of course, after what happened last year, we had a failure of the easterly QBO. We're going to have to wait and see. I won't truly, uh, uh, you know, say it's happening and, until it's there, until it's happening. But but it does look as though in the stratospheric level that ECQBO is powering up. We should soon have the uh, number four April's QBO. This is from uh, NERV. This is sh uh, showing all months QBO numbers going uh, back to the 1950s. So the negative numbers are the easterly QBO phases. The uh, positive numbers are the westerly QBO phases. You see how, see how this oscillates uh, between between the year, between westerly and easterly QBO phases, some some years showing these positive numbers, uh, some years showing the negative numbers, and and so on. Right, so we come down to 2021, and we can see that last month the uh, QBO number came in at plus 9.75, quite strong westerly QBO phase, and that has been the case like since the second half of last year that we've been in this westerly QBO as the easy QBO failed. This is where April's number will be placed just here. I think that will be lower, maybe quite significantly, than uh, the March's number. 
So it'll be interesting, uh, interesting to see. I think it'll, this is March, of course. I think it'll come in under that. And it may come in quite significantly under that. It won't be negative yet. It won't be easily. But I would suspect that we will see quite a significant reduction in that Wesley Cubio number when this comes in. It's going to come in any time. And we will bring you up to date with it in uh, next week's Sunday Rounder, of course. And then as we go further on through this year, I would suspect that in these, uh, the, the numbers plates just here, um, will show increasing size of the easterly QBO. So by the end of the summer, we should be seeing negative numbers, I would have thought. Uh, right, let's have a look at the Arctic and North Atlantic Oscillation. We'll do some forecasting uh, for you. So uh, this is how the AO observed and forecasted currently currently looking. Again, as with all of the indexes, the Arctic Oscillation is just an index that's, that's reflecting the atmospheric state. It does not drive anything in its own terms. just tells us what the atmosphere is doing. So when the AO is uh, negative, we'll have blocking over the Arctic and over North Pole. When the AO is positive, we'll have low pressure over the Arctic and over the North Pole. So the, the current position of the AO is negative. We've got blocking uh, around Greenland and over Pole, uh, of course. That's come back again. Uh, of course, through the winter, the AO was very negative. You can see that just here until like mid-February, and then we went into a positive phase of the AO as the blocking went away. But it's come back as this spring has gone on, and where we currently are with the Arctic Oscillation is in a negative phase as we have northern blocking. Now, the GFS ensembles are keeping, uh, which have a red line at the end, they're keeping the AO neutral to weekly negative as we're going through the first week or so of May, possibly signs by the middle of May that the uh, AO is going to start move into start moving into a positive phase. So that could see the blocking beginning to go away, and uh, that might see us warming things up, because we have had a very cold April. We might start to see things warming up as we go through May, if the, uh, if the northern blocking begins to disappear. The NAO observed and forecast is same idea. So again, just measuring air pressure this time between Iceland and the Azores. So the NAO is uh, currently, again, in negative phase. So both the indexes are negative. Hardly a surprise that it's quite cold with both the indexes in a negative uh, scenario. The uh, GFS ensembles are keeping the NAO negative through the next week to 10 days. Possibly signs, but it begins to move more positive again, as with the AO, into the middle part of May. So mid-May might start, we've talked about this a lot in the videos the past few days, mid-May might start to see a change to something dry and warmer, maybe a strengthening of the Azores high, maybe a return of more of a southwesterly type flow, which would be warmer uh, than the Norvalis, and we've currently been getting, and we might be seeing evidence of that within uh, within the GFS ensembles. The only thing I'd say is that any change towards a positive AO, NAO is quite late on, it's between days 10 to 14 or days 10 to 15 so we need to be cautious about it. it's in the unreliable time frame of a gfs and its ensembles but maybe a little bit of evidence there of uh, by mid-may something a little bit uh, warmer beginning to get going Right, let's do some forecast man, before we go. Uh, so these are the GFS upper air temperature and precipitation ensembles for the next couple of weeks. So red line is the 30-year upper air temperature average in Glasgow today. So it's uh, going to be cold, uh, cold on average through the next week. Temperatures stay very suppressed, very much below average over the next week. Uh, beyond that, like today's 10, 11, 12, there's a slight recovery perhaps in the temperature taking place. But still, even then, a little bit below average. It's not until we get to the middle of May which is this period just here, but we do start to see those upper air temperatures starting to return back closer to average. And precipitation-wise, there's going to be regular bouts of rain to come. Uh, so very wet just there. That's a big area of low pressure that's coming in tomorrow. And will deliver a lot of wet weather for bank holiday uh, Monday. And then after that, just regular precipitation spikes, really. There's going to be plenty of rain through the first half of May. We do need it because April was very dry, but <laughs> there's going to be plenty of it about. Temperature anomalies from the 2nd of May to the 10th are coming out colder than average. It's a cold and average first week to 10 days of May. Precipitation anomalies are very significantly wet and average. It's been a long, 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 long time since we've seen a precipitation anomaly as wet as that. 
um, you know, most of uh, April uh, was, was just continuously dry and average, but May looking like a little bit of a deluge uh, now, actually. So, so significantly above average rainfall from the 2nd to the 10th of May. Latest wind flow map from earthnorthschool.net shows low pressure is getting close. At the moment, we're still under uh, a slight sort of slack uh, pattern, really, uh, almost like a call. Uh, neither high pressure nor low pressure, but there's plenty of low pressure in the Atlantic. That's all going to start heading our way in the next 24 hours or so. By Wednesday, as the UK met, by Wednesday, low pressure will be over Denmark. We're pulling in a cold and showery northerly wind. And then as we go to the second half, um, next week, we start to move low pressure in off the Atlantic. So by next weekend, it's in midnight on Saturday, so as we go with the UK Met, by then, low pressure pushing up from the southwest, bringing further bouts of heavy rain. Matt, we'll try and introduce something warmer or milder anyway from uh, the southwest, however. GFS looks like that. Uh, so again, winds are in from the north on Wednesday as low pressure exits to uh, Denmark. We go beyond that into second half of next week. Could be some rain at times in the south, more sort of showering in the north. And then by Saturday and Sunday next week, uh, deepening air of low pressure pushes up from the south. That will bring heavy bouts of rain up from the south, but will probably introduce something a little bit milder or less cold from the south. Back low pressure increasing to southern north sea, pulls the wind into the north and to the northeast as we move up towards uh, day 10, so back into northern east again. Uh, maybe get a little bit of a ridge building from the southwest. So this is the 12th of uh, May, it's day 10. Just a little bit of a ridge building up from the southwest end, it's a little bit drier. Uh, and maybe a little bit warmer, but I don't think that ridge can last. It looks rather flimsy, and so very quickly we're back into uh, west is and low pressure in from off the Atlantic. Once again, as we get to the end of the GFS midnight run, which is the 18th of May, we may get a change towards something drier and warmer in the second half of May, but the evidence at the moment is very, very flimsy about this. So we do need to stay really cautious about prospect of any substantial pattern change, I think. Uh, GM looks like that again. Normally wings cold and showery on Wednesday. Uh, keep it that way through to safe half next week. Next weekend will bring low pressure in profit. Now, this does turn wind into the south, so this is clearly uh, a much warmer wind direction, but will still be very unsettled with this low pressure throwing up bands of uh, rain uh, across the country. And up to day 10, we just keep this low pressure powering through from the Atlantic. So very unsettled with uh, the GM. And then the ECM uh, WF looks like this. Again, winds are in from the north as we come to the uh, second half of this week. So cold and showering up to next weekend. Then in comes this low pressure. It'll bring lots of heavy rain in from the Atlantic, but will change wind direction to uh, a rather milder or even warmer southerly southwesterly. Um, and low pressure just sort of sits around the country as we get up towards day 10 as a weakening trough bringing further showery uh, conditions. Eastern Europe looking quite hot, by the way. Winds coming up from the south. Now, we cannot show you the options on the table in the Samuel Samuels today from the Icelandic Metals because they're not updated yet, so we'll show you those in our live stream uh, later. We will show you the precipitation type forecast based on that ECM run, however. So, in comes tomorrow's deluge, wet and windy weather sweeping in from off the uh, Atlantic. Going to be a, a wet and windy Bank Holiday Monday, we're going to cold, showery, northerly winds. Quite significant snow showers there for Scotland. On Tuesday, wow, I wouldn't believe that in May, would you? And then beyond that, we keep it pretty showery, more wintry showers running down the east coast there on uh, Wednesday, and, and then some rain flirting with southern coastal areas in the second half week, more wintry showers uh, for Scotland. Uh, and then heading into the weekend, we get that low pressure coming off the Atlantic, brings lots of heavy rain in from the south and southwest, but does turn wind direction into a southerly southwest, so it starts to get significantly. Uh, milder, uh, probably, but with further rain at times and quite significant rain at that. So it's a wet old scene through the first uh, half of May. Uh, we can't show you the CFS weeklies, either they have updated, so we'll show you those in the live stream too. So the last thing we'll show you will be uh, the CFS V2 700 millibar height anomaly 
for June. And look at this, if you're waiting for some drier, warmer weather, June 700 millibar high dominant is now showing high pressure from the Atlantic into Northern Europe. That's a big area of high pressure. Look at that high pressure. It starts to like in Eastern America. It stretches all the way across the Atlantic into the UK and goes up to Northern Europe as well. Low pressure is pushed off with jet stream up to Greenland ice, and that could be quite a dry and a hot June if that came off. The only thing I'd say about that is that the CFS was predicting a very similar pattern for May, like um, a month or so ago, and we know that May is going to be actually, certainly the first half of it anyway, will be a very unsettled and quite wet, you know, wet and cool uh, first half. So I'll be very, very cautious about that idea. But that's what CFS is showing today. Anyway, for its 700 millibar high to normally. As a result, it's going for a warmer than average June as well. Temperatures going above average. And also, with such high pressure, you would expect it, a drier than average June forecast as well. So maybe we're going to get a nice start to summer 2021. We shall have to wait and see. Right, I've enjoyed this Sunday round. It's been a laugh, hasn't it? If you enjoyed this Sunday round, please can you smash the like button. Uh, make sure you subscribe to our channel. You may see future weather content if you do that. Got to pull on around number 90 subscribers now to get to 11K. So we're getting ever closer to 11K. Tell friends, family, everybody else who subscribe. Thank you so much, everyone, uh, for doing that. And drop a comment and let us know what you think. Right, we're done with the Sunday Roundup uh, for another week. We're going to be back later on, live streaming from 6 o'clock. So the things that we haven't been able to show you in the, in the Sunday Roundup, uh, you know, like, like the CFS Weekly is and uh, the Oxford Table from the ECM Ensembles, <coughs> excuse me, from the Isaiah Metos, we'll show you those uh, in the live stream. And we'll, it's a Sunday live stream, so we're going to do some long range uh, as well. So uh, we'll be showing you data from the CFS and also from CanSips, I think, today. So you enjoy the rest of your Sunday afternoon, and I shall see you live at 6 o'clock. But for Sunday Roundup, that's all for now, and thanks for watching.